friends wrote me letters of the discussions that were happening in the coffee shops of Berkeley. You know, people were interested in politics there. Something was happening. They had already organized some little dinky, you know, student activist group on campus that was starting to experiment with actually doing things. You know, Aristotle said, if you are not a citizen, you are either a beast or a god. Now, I ask you a very simple question. People start talking, bringing in the Greek philosophers, bringing in the French Revolution, talking about all these ideas, constitutional liberties, as if they had meaning. What you have there are a few of these rather of bearded, unwashed characters uh, with sandals and long hair uh, who normally would be regarded sort of tolerantly as a lunatic fringe, uh, which you uh, put up with, but you do not necessarily encourage. And uh, in effect, the campus has been turned over to these characters. Somewhere in the process of the FSM, for the very first time, the young, privileged, affluent children of the culture began to see themselves as an oppressed class. It was an astounding perception, you know, because here we were, we, we were at the height of the privilege, the best students at the best multiversity, destined to be the managers of the society, and in the middle of this, we turned around and looked at our education and said, wait a minute, somehow the best is the worst. It put us out of touch with the society. It severed technology from values. It severed the intellect from the heart. For many people, this was the only educational activity that we were involved in that was deeply meaningful. So here we are. Four students are getting the ax. Six organizations are getting the ax for standing up this semester and for fighting for these things. They're getting the ax not for what they did, but for what we have done. They spoke for us, they were part of us, they have been singled out, and they're going to be chopped off. Well, I ask you to consider, if this is a firm, and if the Board of Regents are the Board of Directors, and if President Kerr, in fact, is the manager, then I tell you something, the faculty are a bunch of employees, and we're the raw materials, but we're a bunch of raw materials that don't mean to be, have any process upon us, don't mean to be made into any product, don't mean, don't mean to end up being bought by some clients of the university, be they the government, be they industry, be they organized labor, be they anyone, or human beings. Ronald Reagan walked onto the political stage as a candidate for governor in 1966. During his campaign, he found that attacking what he called the mess at Berkeley pleased the crowds. It began a year ago when the so-called free speech advocates, who in truth have no appreciation for freedom, were allowed to assault and humiliate the symbol of law and order of policemen on the campus. And that was the moment when the ringleaders should have been taken by the scruff of the neck and thrown out of the university once and for all. He won by pandering to a citizenry that was outraged by what these terrible, insolent, ungrateful children were doing on the campuses. As a matter of fact, I have here a copy of a report of the district attorney of Alameda County. It concerns a dance that was sponsored by the Vietnam Day Committee, sanctioned by the university as a student activity, and that was held in the men's gymnasium at the University of California. The incidents are so bad, so contrary to our standards of human behavior, that I couldn't possibly recite them to you here from this platform in detail. In the streets of Oakland, a few miles from the Berkeley campus, the Black Panthers came forward as the cutting edge of black power. Their militancy had a magnetic effect on the student movement. We want the Panthers to be our friends. We want to follow their lead in some fashion that's confusing, that's mysterious, all we are aware of. We want to go black and white together into some positive future against the oppressor who is feeling ever more oppressive. Panthers exercised a heavy influence in the imagination of the white left, partly because the white left was confused about who it was and what it ought to do. They were fascinated by this tough, macho image, and they followed it 
not so much willfully, but involuntarily, because it was the projection out there of the thing in their own actions that thrilled them most. Bring it on. If you want war, let there be war. This is what we're saying. Is that clear? In other words, if he is convicted and sentenced to death, Oakland will erupt. This whole country is going to erupt. That's what we're telling you. We're going to do everything that we can to see to it that the whole world erupts. Is that clear? The Panthers seemed even crazier than they were because they were playing the media and the media was loving them. The media picked up their current, fed the narrowest parts of their image back to us in the most dramatic hype terms that the Panthers themselves wanted them to be projected. Uh, it drove the police crazy. The police were furious, wanted to get them all over the country. And it drove some of us, uh, well, it incited some of us with superficial fantasies of a kind of revolution that was completely inappropriate, had nothing to do with the actual landscape of possibility. To, it was interesting to me more deeply and metaphorically, you know, if that was what they were doing, what was appropriate in our community? When I thought of revolution then, the whole idea had assumed complex, enormous dimensions. It didn't mean a simple change in the institutional order. It meant a coordinated change in all the dimensions, all the aspects of life, how we were with ourselves, how we were with each other. This was so complex a program, you couldn't write it down as the 13-point program of the Berkeley Revolutionary Front, you know. This was something that would take thousands, millions of people engage all their lives in exploring this end of it and this end of it and how these ends might fit together. And it was clear by then that all this exploration was there to do. People had begun each part of the exploration. How, okay, I forbear to list them, okay? And at the same time, it seemed impossible. There was no time. The war got worse faster. The political activity got worse faster. They were killing more and more people every time you placed some degree of hope in a national leader, ka ka you know? So much life, so much death, so much possibility, so much impossibility.